Hello med students, um, my name is Sandra and I'm in fifth year. I'm just here speaking to Professor Irison about asthma and its guidelines in South Africa. Well hello folks, hello and welcome as well. Yes, I'm Prof Irison, I'm the head of the respiratory division which also covers intensive care and I'm the immediate past president of the South African Thoracic Society. <laughs> and yes, you want to know about the guidelines. Yes, it took us about a year to develop those guidelines. So it takes quite some time to coordinate people from different parts of the country. And we asked them to do literature searches so they're up to date with the most recent literature in the various sites. Before we get to asthma proper, this is a book I've recently published. <laughs> it's on lung diseases. Uh, I would not recommend it for students, unfortunately, because it is highly academic and it's for the academic chest physician. Not that I want to discourage you, <laughs> but right now we're training you to drive the car, yes. and the book is, would be advanced driving. Would be doing the space shuttle. Oh wow, <laughs> space shuttle. Wow, I look okay. forward to that. Let's talk about <laughs> asthma. What would you like to do? Um, well, do you want to talk about just what it is? Like it's an inflammatory condition. Okay, so and asthma, it's... yes, is an inflammatory condition of the airways and the inflammation is brought about because of allergy. Yes. So people are born with a genetic predisposition to respond to common things that we breathe and touch in our environment. So for people who do not have this genetic predisposition, they have no problems in their lungs and on their body for that matter. But in people who are allergic, they may show in one of several ways, either with allergic rhinitis where the nose is inflamed and runs, allergic conjunctivitis, allergy on the skin, Yes. And finally, allergy in the airways. So when the patients who are predisposed breathe in these antigens or allergens, then the body reacts to them by inflammatory cells coming into the airways and causing the inflammation of asthma. How patients perceive this is discomfort in the chest and because of the inflammation, the airways become twitchy and tend to close up. Okay. So that's the bronchoconstriction, the narrowing, and that's what patients perceive as the whistling sound that comes from the airways and the wheezing that characterizes asthma. Yeah, but sometimes you can get um, exacerbation without the wheezing. So, in general, uh, when patients have developed asthma, then there are periods or episodes of the airway tightening up and airways of bronchoconstriction yes. that they usually need to take a short acting beta agonist. The commonest one is subutamol or ventolin, yes. which relaxes airway smooth muscle so that the airways can dilate and so that the patients can breathe more comfortably. Okay. When you talk about an exacerbation, this is what we call an acute attack of okay. asthma. The acute attack is a much more severe inflammation and closing up of the airways, okay. and it tends to be much more prolonged. So it can last, last several hours or days. And these patients invariably need to go to a medical practitioner or a hospital and get high doses of treatment. And the way we give that treatment is by a nebulizer so they can get high doses of treatment. And they often need intravenous or oral steroids to block the inflammation for the attack to resolve. Okay. And sometimes they need intensive care. And in general, it's only in this advanced stage, you, you spoke about a situation where you don't hear the wheezing. So in general, you only usually do not hear the wheezing when it's very severe asthma. Wow. It's approaching the ICU. Then air movement, there's so little air movement in the chest, you don't hear the wheezing. But that's very unusual, unfortunately. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, actually, 
wanted to ask you about the x-ray findings. X-ray findings are very easy. Mm -hmm. Nothing. <laughs> so unfortunately, asthma is not a condition that you can see on a chest x-ray. Okay. Because the airways are largely invisible on a chest x-ray. So you don't see them on a chest x-ray. The only time we would do a chest x-ray in the setting of asthma is if there is another sickness that is mimicking asthma. So, for example, in an older patient who's smoking, COPD. and they may have either COPD or an early lung cancer, yes. and the cancer is narrowing the airways and causing wheezing. So, there's usually no need for a chest X-ray, but we would do a chest X-ray to see if there's another disease that is looking like asthma, such as lung cancer or COPD or bronchiectasis. <laughs> And finally, we would do a chest X-ray to look for the complications of asthma. The usual important complication is usually in an acute emergency setting, okay. when because of the airway constriction, air can't come out of the lungs, and it's like a balloon then, and this balloon will burst, and the lung bursts, and that's how you get a pneumothorax, so we do, and then there might be very diminished breath sounds. Wow. Okay. Um. I actually wanted to ask you about the lung function test. Who is giving them and where are they available and so forth? Okay. So, because I told you that this is a disease we can't recognize by an x-ray, yes. we need another method to make the diagnosis. And the method of choice is a lung function test. Now, lung function tests range from very simple to quite sophisticated. Okay. And the simplest lung function test is a peak flow meter. Now, when we think about the airways, and as I told you, the airways close down, we can think about it as any tube and perhaps like a hose pipe. Mm -hmm. And the flow of water, if the hose pipe is compressed, then there's less water coming out. Yes. So we can measure the way the lungs work in terms of the flow of air. And so the simplest and very useful machine is something called a peak flow meter. It's quite inexpensive. And you blow into this machine and it gives you a reading of how fast people are blowing out. And you're not going to believe it that you can...